All right, so in this video, I'm going to share with you the entire process, the timeline, even the interview questions that eventually led up to my current job as an environmental engineer. But I do want to give out a little disclaimer. So each company and everything you apply for, it's going to be different. So some companies, when you apply, they might respond in like two weeks, and then you'll receive some follow-up emails and you'll get some interviews and eventually you'll maybe eventually get a position. But some job responses can last for a long time. They could last for three to six months before you even hear anything about them. So do realize that me sharing my experience with you guys, it's not like a guaranteed, oh, he's gonna get this or because you follow my advice that you're gonna have the same results. It's completely different. So again, it all depends on the company. The current situation, like as of right now, with the whole pandemic, it's probably gonna take a bit longer. If not, you might not get anything at all. It could depend on like their human resources or maybe what's happening with the company internally. You don't really know what's going on, but the time varies before you hear anything about them. So I do encourage you to just keep applying, you know, just spam, send out your resumes to all the other places. Because if you give like full hope into one company, thinking that they'll respond to you right away, sorry to disappoint you, but they're probably not going to. There are many procedures that, that they go through, so maybe you send out your resume to them. They might have to go through some like algorithmic separation, so maybe your resume didn't have some keywords. So do realize that the time response varies drastically. That's all I'm trying to say. So with that being said, let's get started straight into the video. On December 25th, 2018, that was when I applied for this job. Yeah, I was pretty much desperate every single day I was applying, even on Christmas. I was still applying to jobs. And you're going to see a picture email just to show proof that I did. Mind you that I applied to over like 100 environmental engineering jobs. So again, I just spammed my resume out there. And I didn't really look back at it. I just, you know, kept going. And then like, I didn't say, oh, I want this company so badly. No, I just kept going. I just kept sending them out. And I encourage you to do this too, though I do recommend that you tweak your resume and your cover letters and whatever, be geared towards that company. Anyway, so I applied on Christmas Day, December 2018. I eventually got an initial follow-up email from the manager on January 3rd, 2019. So about one and a half, to maybe two weeks later, I got an actual follow-up response. And this doesn't really happen a lot at all, okay? So when they respond to you, you want to be on top of things and you want to make sure to respond back to them because again for the most part sometimes you send out your resume and you won't hear a response for like months and they really don't care. So when you have a human respond to you and like email you back, you want to be sure to respond to them back immediately showing that you are interested in this position and that you are willing to follow up with them. So I got that email on January 3rd. I responded immediately like the day, the same day or maybe the day after that. And then I got an initial phone interview. I rescheduled that initial phone interview for the next week. So on January 9, 2019, that was when we had our initial phone interview. Now, I don't really remember the phone interview questions. I know it was really just broad. It wasn't so much like, hey, uh, why do you want the position right away? It was still just an initial phone interview. They don't really go so much into detail about the position yet. They're just trying to see whether or not you're a good fit. Maybe you're a relatable person. Maybe like your personality. It's not so much like why do you want this job right away. So do keep in mind what the phone interview might look for and what an actual in-person interview might look for. And I'll tell you more about the questions that they asked during the in-person interview later on in the video. So stay tuned. So after the phone interview on January 9, I eventually got and scheduled for an in-person interview on January 25, 2019. So about two weeks after the phone interview, I guess they had other phone interviews to go through. They wanted an in-person interview on that day, January 25th. So starting from December 25, when I first applied online, after that initial online application, December 25, on January 25, about one month afterwards, I had my first in-person interview with this company. Oddly enough, on January 25, 2019, I think that was a Friday, I got my wisdom teeth pulled out on Monday so I had like big poofy chipmunk cheeks, but I was still able to talk and I didn't look so swollen that day. So I didn't really want to tell them and say, okay, we rescheduled. I felt like that might look bad on me. And in a way I was able to recover pretty quickly from that extraction. So it wasn't too bad in the first place. After that initial in-person interview on January 25, they said that they'd follow me later on a few weeks later. So again, even after the interview, I have no company loyalty, sorry. I just kept applying to other jobs. So again, you're not guaranteed any job, no matter the interview, so I just kept applying as if I didn't get the job. And I still recommend you do this. 
just keep applying because you don't want to give your hopes up thinking that you got it no matter how well you think you did the interview. Don't trick yourself thinking that you did well and that you got it because it all depends eventually whether or not they offer it to you. But luckily, on February 11, I got an email from the manager saying that they really like me and that they want me on this position. So on February 11, about what two weeks after that initial in-person interview, I received an email from the manager saying that I got the job. But all that doesn't matter until you get an actual offer letter from the human resources manager. And so finally, on February 20, 2019, is when I officially received the offer letter from the human resource person. So this is an actual official letter. Here's picture proof of it. I'm going to delete out some like personal information on that, but here's actual picture proof of what they sent me. And here's how much they offered me. 75000 a year. So that's the timeline from starting right when I applied to each individual process and step to eventually when I got the actual offer letter. So it... In total, it took about two months to, from start to finish, and on my first official day, I started on March 4th, 2019. That was when I actually entered the facility, had like a dress shirt and dress tie, and then that was my first day on the job and having them train me. All right, so now that you have the general timeline from when I started to when I actually got the job, now let's talk about the actual interview questions that they asked me in person. So I don't remember too much about the phone interview. Again, I what I said was that it was mostly pretty broad, pretty general, and more really personable, not so much business related. It was more casual talk than actual business. Here's the actual questions that I remember from when they asked me in person. So do keep in mind that these questions are not going to be the same questions that they ask for everyone. So every single job position will be different. So maybe your responsibilities will be different from mine. I just want to be very clear on that. That way you don't think, oh, this question will be asked for my specific job interview. No, that's not the case. That was just what they asked me. It's not going to be what they asked you. So the first question that they asked me, and it's probably going to be the same for most other jobs out there, is going to be, number one, tell me about yourself. So this question, to me, I actually hate this question because it's so broad, so general. You don't really know what to say. You don't really know what they want to hear. So... It really all depends on the actual interviewer. It's all really subjective. So maybe if they're in a cranky mood and you say the wrong thing, they might not like you. So do be very careful when you answer this question. Broad enough to where that they understand that you're still a person and relatable, but also specific enough to where it's like you're not rambling about random stuff about your life. So generally for this type of question, I talk about like my background experience, my background education. So I graduated from this school. I had this experience. I worked in this you want to make sure that what you're telling them is relatable to that position. So this is geared towards an environmental engineering position. So I talked about my chemistry background, my environmental engineering master's degree, talked about the research projects that I worked on during school. You want to make sure that you're speaking clearly, again, making the topic relevant and still be like friendly in a way. Don't be like too serious because I want to make sure that someone that they're working with is actually like fun and human and enjoyable to work with. You want to make sure that you narrow down that question and you know have a good answer to that question because for the most part every single job you apply to they're going to ask that question like straight up number one that's the question that they're going to ask the first time around next they asked me why did you choose environmental engineering for the most part again this question is pretty broad i hate this question too the next question i remember that they asked me was describe a time when you had to work with a team so i gave an example of that during my college experience gave an example during my previous work experience where we had, like, I worked in a lab, we had to separate tasks in order to achieve our ultimate goal. So we had like one person do this, one person do that, another person do something else. That way all three of us can separate our tasks, work together, and then come back the next day and have our you know certain duties done and then just you know finish the goals much faster than having one person do everything. The fourth question they asked was, describe a time when you had to explain things to a non-STEM member. STEM meaning like science and technology, engineering, mathematics. So pretty much how did you explain in simple terms a science topic to a non-science person? So because my job was mostly like towards environmental compliance, I had to speak with non-science related people. So managers, business managers, all these people, they didn't have science background. And I came from like a heavily science, chemistry based, engineering based background. So they don't want to complicate things, they don't want to make 
things confusing for people, for the common people. So they just want to make sure that I can be able to speak clearly and, you know, communicate what I want to say to other people who don't really know the lingo. So what I told them, my answer was that I used to be a teaching assistant at my university. You know, I taught students. So I had to go from like a really complicated topic to a more dumbed down version just to be able to communicate clearly with them. The next question that they asked me was, what field was I interested in? So because my role was pretty much geared towards environmental compliance, we had to deal with multiple different fields. So things like water, hazardous waste, hazardous materials, air quality, solid waste, underground and above storage tanks. We had to look at multiple programs and we were pretty much under a big umbrella of multiple different fields. So they just asked me like, what field am I more interested in? I told them that I had so much experience with water in my graduate school that they were like, okay, you, have, you understand the concepts of like water, water quality, so maybe we'll put you in water. Or that because you have like an understanding of chemistry, then we'll give you like hazardous waste, hazardous materials, that way you can actually identify what is a hazard. So yes, my chemistry background, my chemistry skills, my degree, it did come in handy. Because they knew that I was more adept to this knowledge that I can have this field and understand it much quickly than someone who has no exposure to that at all. Lastly, they always end it with, do you have any general questions for us? So this, for me, this is the part where if you mess up on all the questions that they asked you before and you don't really know the answers to that question, of all things, this question, this is where you shine. And this is where I shine, pretty much. You always, always, always want to have a question for them. This shows that you are interested and that you are keeping up and that you are like paying attention to them as you are speaking and as they are like exchanging conversations. And this pretty much shows that you truly want the job. So even if you fail at all the questions that they ask you and it's too technical, at least you can end it on a strong note saying that, hey, at least I tried my best and that I'm interested in learning. And that's really all they want. What I did was I asked them, what skills did you learn on a job that you can incorporate into your personal life? You see how I went from like very professional, very business, very serious related, geared towards like the position to now more casual. I don't know if this will work for every single employer out there. You don't really know if your interviewer will be like upset if, they, if you ask them this question. But for me, because I had some pretty cool managers and they were pretty young and they were like really understanding, I knew that they would enjoy this question. So I asked them this question. They all had different responses and they really enjoyed the fact that I made things less serious. Going from, again, going from very professional to very casual and laid back and we were all joking around. That's what they want to see. They want to see someone who's relatable more friendly, very personable, because they're going to be working with you for a long time. So if you don't have any sort of friendly connection out there and you're pretty serious all the time, then it's going to be hard for them to keep up with you. They might not even like you after years of working there. So make sure that you are at least relatable and down to earth. I can't say that this will work for every single job interview that you have, but my job interview with this it worked. So yes, eventually, after all these interview questions, I got an offer letter from this position. So who knows if what I say will actually work with what you might do in the future. I feel like there are some other questions that I might have just not remembered, but for the most part, I feel like this is a pretty good list. Again, I do want to make a disclaimer that what I'm saying and what I did does not guarantee that you will have the same results as me. You will not have the same timeline, you will not have the same happy managers and bosses that you that I have, you will not get the same offer, you will not get the same everything. So be very weary and cautious that what I'm saying, my personal experience, will be different from yours. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, go leave a like and all that good stuff. If you have any questions, like more specific questions that you would like to hear, just write that down in the comments because I actually like answering some of these questions. So do leave suggestions and then I will try to get back to you on that. And I'll see you in the next video.